Hey y'all, hey, welcome to my channel. And thanks for joining us for part two of the LA Girls Trip. Before we get started, here's where you can find me on social media. We started our morning with a banging breakfast made by the Colonel. All right, so it's day two, we had breakfast, we cleaned up, everybody is showered and have ironed their clothes. So we are about to hit Rodale Drive and we're gonna hit some a couple other places. Before we headed out, I wanted to get a group pick. It was my plan to do a group pick every morning before we headed out so that we'll have something to remember us by. I was being picky here trying to get the colors, but little did I realize there was red in the picture. But then we finally got it. Hey, so we're all ready. Everybody ready? <laughs> we're ready. We're out. For transportation, we opted to use Uber. That way, everybody can chip in for each location that we were going to. And it actually wasn't that bad. Otherwise, we would have had to pay for parking as well as the car rental. And Uber just seemed to be very convenient. We didn't even have to wait, depending on where we were going. They came pretty fast. So I'm just showing you guys just some of the area from Westwood over to Rodale Drive. So what we're whispering about right here is that our Uber driver doesn't speak English, so she says. She says she only speaks Russian, but April's having a whole conversation with her. She's making her learn English throughout this conversation. I said you make your own schedule. It started off like you could make your own time for driving. Rodeo Drive. This is my bucket list trip to be on Rodeo Drive. And we've only gone into Ralph Lauren. We saw the Louis Vuitton store, but we didn't go in there yet. And there are a lot of people. Now, it feels a little hotter down here, but I am grateful for the palm trees. There are loads and tons of stores. It is beautiful out here. And so, I'm super excited to have hit my bucket list being out here on Rodeo Drive. So let's see what we get. We went into Ralph Laurent and saw this banging bag for $4,500. I'll show you guys right here. <laughs> that bag is super dope, guys. Super dope. So here's one of the yellow cars, guys, that I saw online. And it has its own meter for parking. So they personally have it Bajan, for the house of Bajan for over 40 years on Rodale Drive. They have their own spot. So it is a Rolls Royce limited edition. And it's a convertible. Here is an indication that we have arrived. I believe this is the original sign. So this is a part of the old job, this cobblestone road, and there's more stores, Versace, Stefano Ricci, Tiffany and Company. I'm not sure how you get into some of these because the doors aren't open on this side. I guess we're going into the Versace store. But I love this this walkway here. It's 
pretty dope. We definitely didn't stay in Versace long before we hit Tiffany's. Don't you just love this luggage right here? It was a perfect day in LA to go shopping on Rodeo Drive. All the top name stores are here. Gucci, Prada, Louis Vuitton, and many, many more. Had I been a shopper, I probably would have paid attention more to the names. Sorry, guys. So here is the Beverly Hills side. I hope you guys can see it. It is a lot of sun. As you can see, there's a lot of tourists out here getting ready to get their picture in front of the infamous sign. And I love you. You see the crowds that come over to see the sign? We came in and got our pictures just in time. From here, we just took a little stroll through the Beverly Hills area, the residential area, just to see oh. what we could see, if anything was any different than where we lived. As I said again, it was such a beautiful Santa day, Monica so why there. not walk? Ooh, look at this. Look at this street. Look how beautiful oh, this street looks with street. all the trees. I am just Ooh, loving this stroll right here. Yeah. I wish we had palm trees to go down. Check out the kernel. <laughs> I forgot the name of the street that we were actually walking on, but what I did notice is that there's a two hour parking sign on this street. I don't know if it's for the streets, you know, to the left or to the right. So if you guys decide to come to LA and you want to drive down to Rodeo Drive, just beware of the residential signs, whether you have to have permit parking or whether there is a two hour parking. I did notice that there were Uber drivers parked over here. I guess they're just waiting for shoppers to give them a buzz and this will put them in close proximity. Now, just because we see this gate right here doesn't mean that there's a celebrity that lives behind here. What we were told is that sometimes there are music producers, movie producers, executives from television stations that actually live over here. So not every blocked off driveway belongs to a celebrity. Well, we didn't find the Beverly Hills sign that I wanted while walking through here, but we did find it when we went back to the visitor center. After we left the visitor center, then we headed over to the Grove where we were going to have lunch and do just a little bit more shopping. The air over here at the Grove felt light and airy and happy and free. I guess because everybody is spending happy money. But it was, again, beautiful even over here, still sunny. We actually came over here to go to lunch and then do a little bit more shopping. It was recommended that we try a restaurant called Whispers. And so we went there and the food was great. And I'll give you a sneak peek at their menu right here. I must say, our food was delish. And then once lunch was over, back to the grove we went to walk around the rest of the grove and just enjoy the happiness of the people. Now, what I would have loved to see is the grove lit up at night. I'm sure it was beautiful with all the lights up. And for those of you that get tired of walking, they do have a trolley car that rides from one end of the grove all the way down to the farmer's market area so that you can rest your feet just momentarily. We were told that this whole entire ride from end to end and back is about 15 minutes with no stopping. It's just one stop. Attention to the right, we have Parkside. It is a lawn devoted to live music and entertainment, so pull up a blanket, sit back, relax, and enjoy some live entertainment. And while you're there, maybe consider swinging on over to the Fountain Bar, right to our right, for some signature cocktails. They are known for their gin and tonic, which suits me just fine. And of course, we have the Grove Fountain. This fountain 
Washington puts up shows on the top of every hour. You can watch the water dance to the music. We got dropped off at the famous Dylan's Candy Store. Almost felt like I was in a little Willy Wonka moment here. You can find any type of candy in Dylan's, especially candy from when way back in the day, the 1980s. They had a section just for all these candies that will just bring you back to your childhood. And then along the wall, for all the celebrities that actually came into Dylan's, they box up the candies that they actually purchased, and then the celebrities autographed the boxes, and you actually got to see what they actually purchased from Dylan's. That was pretty cool. And on the side there, they also had ice cream, so you get candy as well as ice cream. What adult kid would not love this spot? Then we moved over to the farmer's market where it smelled delicious. There's all kinds of foods from all kinds of areas over here, as well as some souvenir shops where you can buy souvenirs for your loved ones here. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to eat over here because we had just eaten lunch, but hopefully my next trip to LA, we'll be able to revisit the farmer's market and grab a bite to eat. Another tip that I want to leave you guys with is if you're taking Uber, make sure when you call for your Uber that you are in a non-populated area. That way it'll be a little bit easier for them to meet you. So that ends day two for us. Keep watching so you can see what happens on day three. And here's our pick of the day. Time to go. So now we are out about to hit Beverly Hills one more again because we got to return some stuff and our Uber is here, it looks like. And so back to Beverly Hills we go. Now we're off to that famous In-N-Out Burger. I'm anxious to see what all the talk is about this In-N-Out Burger place. I always felt like once you had one burger, you've had them all. But let's see. So we just got to In-N-Out Burger and apparently there is a line for the In-N-Out Burger. But we're going to try it and see how it goes. Another thing that I have to share with you guys is don't come here if you're hungry. It is definitely crowded. So I want to show you their menu. Their menu is very minute as you can see. But what we didn't know is that there is a secret menu that houses such things as those animal fries right there. So before you go to In-N-Out Burger, make sure you research what their secret menu is so that you can order accordingly. From there, then we headed over to Hollywood Boulevard to do the Walk of Fame. Here's the Hollywood sign. We're off of Hollywood Boulevard and Cowabunga, something like that. But there it is. So we are on a band to do a tour at Vine Street and Hollywood Boulevard. I was looking to see if I could find the actual tour thing. But I'm sure I have it on Instagram, so make sure you guys are following me on Instagram. But it is a tour Hollywood and Sunset Strip, Rodeo Drive, West Side Loop, filming locations. It's a two hour tour. It's in an open um, tour thing, so I'll show you. Like almost $2,500 for a race, just run a race. Oh no. So it's in an oh, open no. thing, and uh, we actually saw the Hollywood sign. They said they're going to Because I was go wanting to run my 50th. Yeah, the Hollywood sign, and then we'll be able to get out and I think take a picture. Like the 50th state. But, but and I want to find a Google to be the 50th. Here's our tour guide, Victor, who was kindly asking if he could just drop us off at the Chinese theater while they waited for more people to actually purchase the tour. They wanted to have a full tour. And so we kindly obliged um, so that we can actually get to see some more of the Walk of Fame. 
as well as see the Chinese theater. It was good that we actually chose this option because as you're doing the Walk of Fame, you're looking down most of the time. So you're not really seeing the stores that are on the left or on the right. We did see some souvenir shops, but for the most part, we were missing them all because we were so focused in looking at who we were stepping on. Never know what you're going to stumble upon visiting L.A. Here we stumbled upon the world premiere of the Hobbs and Shaw movie featuring The Rock. Now we got down here a lot early, I'm going to say, because the TV cameras and crew were still setting up, as well as some of the extras that they had lined up for the different um, TV premieres. So unfortunately, we didn't get to see The Rock or meet The Rock or even anyone famous, but... It's good to see how they set up. Then we got back into the truck. We met with our driver and now we are headed on our two hour tour. And here we are going through the mountain as we go up, up, up. Now, I think this is the Mullica Hill mountain. I'm not 100% sure. But once we get to the top, we know that we will see the Hollywood sign and there's a lookout where you can actually get out of the car or get out of your tour bus and you can actually take pictures. So we finally made it to the top, which is the lookout point. Over to the left, you'll be able to take some stairs, about 70 stairs to the top of that little mountain to see the rest of the Hollywood sign. This view is simply uh, amazing, guys. You really have to be here to experience it. The Hollywood sign is over to the left. I'm going to try to actually close in on it. Just so you can see it. We didn't stay here long, but before we left, there was another pick. Then we headed down the hill where we got to see homes of some of the various stars. Now I'm not going to bore you with all these pictures because this video would be super duper long. But I'm just going to show you guys just a few pictures. First up is the home of who he says is Orlando Blooms. Now I kind of would believe this because it actually reminds me of the Lord of the Ring movies. And sometimes these actors and celebrities, they actually buy homes and apartments and decorate them as something that they've acted in as one of their piece of art. So I could believe this is Orlando Bloom's or it was Orlando Bloom's home. Who knows? And then we just kept on traveling down the hill. This ride was just a little bit bumpy. Look at that house up on stilts. That has me nervous. This is the home of Lawrence Fishburne as the driver tells us. We could only go by what the driver tells us. But this is Lawrence Fishburne's house. And you can see that it is gated. It is covered. There was no movement. So we couldn't even tell if anybody was in there. We couldn't even call over the gate. But it looks pretty big. The trees cover a whole lot over here. But it really does look pretty big close up. And as we were driving, we were actually starting to write down the address and the street numbers of whomever the driver said lived where. This is the home of Bob Barker from The Price is Right. You guys remember him, right? So that is his home and Bob Barker is still alive, but we don't know if he actually still lives in this house. Then we went to an area where the driver told us that Whitney Houston resided. Not sure if that was a past or current thing. I thought she lived somewhere outside of New Jersey. This is far from New Jersey. But there is a lot of land here. Simply beautiful. We don't see any cars or any people walking around, but it is a beautiful home. Now this home coming up here, you can believe what you want. He says this is the home of Jay-Z and Beyonce. Who knows? And then on the right, it's supposed to be the home of Mel Gibson. That home is really beautiful and it's really huge. I couldn't even get all of it because of the roof of the truck. So I couldn't get all of it and we weren't allowed to get out of the truck so that we can see. But they could possibly live there. This house coming up needs no introduction. Look on your left, guys. Anybody remembers anything related to this property? That's the um, Fresh Prince yes, house. Yes, good job. Good job, lady. 
Hold on. Yep. Missouri. Good job. This is where Rudy Smith was filming his fresh prince of Bel Air to these guys. <laughs> well, that's all I'm going to show you guys for the day. That's the last home we that we are visiting in Bel Air. Bye, Bel Air. <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> 10 52 at night and we just left the boiling crab in Westwood after being in Hollywood all day. We did the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So sorry guys. I got a few pictures but I didn't videotape. We also did a tour of um, <laughs> Bel Air and Hollywood and looked at some of the stars houses. Um, as you can see, I probably inserted them before this portion. So now we are walking. Back. We're walking back to our condo, which is our Airbnb, which is in Westwood, where we're going to shower and then get up and go to the Hollywood time. So, bye night. Thanks guys for hanging with me for part two. Don't forget to click that like and subscribe button and follow me on all these avenues of social media.